Welcome back to the channel. Art for art's sake, what do we mean by that? Well, according to Wikipedia, it might be that true art is utterly independent of any and all social values and utilitarian function, be that didactic, moral or political. Well, that seems clear enough, but for me as a photographer, it may mean that the sole aim for taking a picture is purely the expression of myself as an individual. Now that might sound a bit pretentious, and I hesitate to call myself an artist as that sounds a bit self-important. But I am driven to take pictures and my work is a representation of how I look at things and how I wish to interpret the world and in particular the urban environment that I choose to work in. I never worry about my method of picture taking or whether I'm wholly going about it the right way or not. For me, the end justifies the means. Personally, making pictures is an aesthetic reaction to living in a city. I like to try and create a sort of artistic order from what I see and encounter on the streets. One of the first things I'll ask myself is can I successfully turn the scene in front of me, and by that I mean the light, shadow, geometry and any human presence, into something artistic? As well as those main graphic building blocks, the answer will sometimes come from whether there is enough subtlety in the scene too. Is there any what I like to call ornamentation? That is, decorative elements that will help to enhance the main subject's appearance. Not only can it help to make something look more elaborate and give more vitality to it, but it can also be used to reduce the heaviness in an image by adding a delicate line or area of light. Like in music where melody can be embellished by adding notes or by modifying the rhythm, for example. Regardless of its content, a picture can succeed or fail based on its graphic characteristics alone. When working in the fine art style, artistic harmony is of paramount importance and often this can come from the more subtle parts of the image. We're going to look at some examples where I think a picture would lose its impact if these areas of subtlety, these ornaments, were removed, and how sometimes the image would be built around these ornaments and composed and even exposed to heighten their appeal. In this example, I was immediately attracted to the lines of light that zigzagged their way across the image. Although really just a detail, this is what I found to be the most interesting part of the composition. I didn't think the image would have very much appeal without them. The texture in the stone is a nice contrast, and the demeanour of our passerby is nice too. In fact, I call this image Slope, mostly because of his seemingly idle and aimless manner. Again, in this one, the lines of light and also the road markings were the main inspiration. It was on a busy road and I had to wait for the right moment, but the crucial geometric details were in place and it was an easy frame. Once you've decided on your composition and you're in place ready to go, a little waiting time is part of the excitement of getting the picture. A light bulb moment for sure. I captured a version of this without the man in it as well because I like the idea of the bulb just hanging there, glowing away. I chose to go with this version because I like the man's seemingly relaxed style, or maybe he's hatching a plan. I'm quite partial to using electric lights in brightly lit, high contrast scenes. There's a nice sort of dichotomy about it. Think about using elements such as this to embellish your images. Look carefully around your frame to see if there's anything that you can include that might help to create a bit more interest, especially in more minimalist surroundings. Geometry is all in this picture, but the guiding light of sunlight, which our character is following, is an important asset learn to recognise when somewhere you like to photograph is at its best according to the light. I have visited my favourite spots dozens of times throughout the year to get an idea of the changing nature of the lighting conditions so that I know when they will be most rewarding. The ornaments or decorations don't have to come from the brightest areas in the image. The lines highlighted in the building vary tonally but contribute to the style of the picture considerably. Time of day will be crucial in capturing an image like this, as the state of play will likely be a short one as the position of the sun changes. Road markings are also great for adding interest to an image. 
Sometimes they can appear like punctuation marks and can contribute a nice abstract feel if used with imagination. I always look out for them and although some might feel they are an ugly distraction, I think they can play a useful part in more artistic urban street photography. Another example, here the road markings were my first thought and then it was about how I could maximise their use. I love these opportunities to use everyday mundane things to either enhance or build pictures around. It's important to explore every possibility when you're out on your photo walks. Something that may not immediately inspire you or feel incomplete can change dramatically if you give it your full consideration. Using these elements can be very effective in raising the profile of an image. So take time on your photo walks to recognise them and start to think how you can either build your compositions around them or simply include them as a way to add decoration. That's all for this video. It's now late April and I'm impatiently waiting to start a new project. So if anyone out there has any special magical powers which they could use to help improve the weather in the UK, I'd be very grateful. To see more of my work, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelde.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, available at Amazon.